We have an awesome springing show for you today. That's right. On this spring cleaning episode, we have all the tips to clean up your health, fashion, and workout. So sit back and relax and enjoy another episode of Juice and Java. Good morning, Salt City. Welcome to our spring cleaning episode. I'm Mia Rossi. And I'm Maddie Stussman. Let's head over to the squeeze. We start this morning with breaking news. It's official. Peyton Manning is retiring. Finally, after all these years, <laughs> and he's going out on top, though, with his Super Bowl that win. That is true. I like how you say finally. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's one of my favorites. So I mean, <laughs> I feel like he has been around, you know, for a while, which yes. he has. And, he's you know. getting old in terms of football yeah. years, and, you know, everyone's kind of been speculating, when is this time going to come? Yeah. I, I think he's, he's doing it at the right time, going out I, on top, like, I you, agree. like you said. <laughs> well, our next story, the producers of High School Musical 4 are searching for five new lead cast members for the movie. It is confirmed that none of the original cast will be returning. The movie will have all new characters, including Aaron, a soccer player who falls for the bad boy, Campbell, who is Troy Bolton 2.0, a super hot soccer theater star who happens to be Sharpay, and Ryan Evans' cousin, Nathali, an outgoing cheerleader, and lastly, Tamara, the former Queen Bee of East High, who is attempting to climb up the social ladder. Producers hope to start filming this fall. I am excited. <laughs> <laughs> I am too. I found out, actually, my sister texted me, and she was like, High School Musical 4, it's official. Like, go audition right now. She's like, I want to like, be well, in that movie. I feel like the cast now is so far removed from um, when they were in it because they were so young. And now, like, Zac Efron is, you know, in all these movies right. with, um, like, James Franco. I know, or they are David so grown Franco, up. and he's... But I would love to to see them in this movie. Like, yes, they I, are High School Musical, and in High School Musical 3, it seemed like they kind of set it up for a new cast, Yes, and then none of those cast members are gonna be in it. Uh -huh. So it's gonna be all new. I do think it's very removed, so yeah. I don't know, we'll see. I love High School Musical. So. I love High School Musical too. I remember going on my like 13th birthday to see High School Musical so it was 3. a while ago. Yeah, yeah, it was a while ago. Well, um, our next story is about emojis. Um, have you ever thought about what emojis are really available? Um, um, the new Like a Girl video points out the lack of emojis that accurately represent girls. Most of the current female texting characters show girls wearing pink, painting their nails, getting a haircut, or dressed as a bride. There are boys rock climbing, playing basketball, and bike riding, but no emojis of girls doing these activities. Research, sh research shows that 54% of girls ages 16 to 24 believe female emojis are stereotypical, and half say they believe they represent only a limited number of female interests. I kind of agree with this. I do too. You know, I never noticed it until I saw this video, which I actually saw yesterday just on accident. Started yeah. playing on YouTube, and you know, I was intrigued. I heard what was going on, mm. and I stopped what I was doing and watched. And I had no idea. And then I went and checked my phone, and it is you know so what? true. And in the um, in the study, they talk about how it's something that you don't realize until you think about it and uh -huh. once you see it you can't unsee it which is so true yeah I know I mean think about it every single time now and it's just like I don't know what were some of the examples just like every character every person that's doing anything well they said athletic. like the only women profession that is represented is um, like a woman as a bride and if you consider oh, that really? uh, yeah wow, if you consider that, is... that as a profession meanwhile they have like um, I think a male police officer and stuff so well even I'm picturing a bicep emoji yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And like that's a boy. Yeah. <laughs> it really is true. So I'm glad it's something that we're yeah. All Hopefully it'll of. be fixed. Yeah. Well, up next, NASA has released a recording of outer space sounding music from the far side of the moon. The music was found by the Apollo 10 astronauts while they were circling the moon almost a decade ago. The transcript of their conversation was released in 2008, but the audio has just become public. Have you listened to this? What are your thoughts? <laughs> Um, I haven't listened to it, uh -huh. <laughs> but I am very interested to see, and it's interesting that it's coming out after all this time. Yeah, I know. I think it, that is kind of odd that it's taken so long. 
I'm really not interested in listening to it. So yes. my face really <laughs> gives me the heebie-jeebies. And um, like hearing those sounds, I think would just be a little odd. I, I agree. Unfortunately, it's <laughs> not something I'm very interested in. But <laughs> well, I'm not sure if astronauts will have this problem, but new <laughs> research shows that your job could actually be making you fat. Scientists say that people in some professions tend to have more unhealthy habits than those in others. Salespeople were among the least healthy of workers of those in the study, with 68% of them having poor eating eating habits. Many fire and policemen were found to be overweight, obese, or having high cholesterol and blood pressure levels, and those who work in transportation made the list because of their smoking habits. The study found that a quarter of these workers haven't quite quit the habit. So I'm hoping that my job <laughs> won't put me in one of those well, we categories. Are sitting down right yeah, now we are being sitting active. down. True. <laughs> it does make me very nervous. I mean, I remember I had an internship, and it was just an environment where there was always food out in front of me, yes. and I consciously, like, because mm -hmm. of that environment, was putting on weight. And so it is very true. Where you are can uh -huh. really affect what you're eating, how active you are, like. They said sales, you know, you're sitting at a desk uh -huh. all day. So. And especially, like, stress could be contributing to those who um, uh, have, like, smoking habits. Or, yeah, exactly. They um, mentioned smoking was one of the factors. Yeah, and, like, they uh -huh. said transportation workers have smoking habits. I mean, even though it's a bad habit, I can see how, you know, if you're, um, you know, driving all night, right. or it's very stressful, a lot of, lot to think about. Well, f firefighters surprised me that they were on that list. Yeah, I they have to be so active. Uh -huh, that their job, yeah, is like that. So I guess you never really know. I will see when we get into the real yeah. world. <laughs> Hopefully I don't fall into one of those categories. I know, seriously. <laughs> well, fashionistas may need to up their game. Writer and photographer Ari Seth Cohen is on a mission to disprove the granny stereotype. Cohen showcases men and women above the age of 60 who are defying how society looks at aging. His books Advanced Style and Advanced Style Older and Wiser are a series of photos showing the grace and creativity of aging. Cohen says they aim to send the message that growing older is a natural part of life. I love this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I haven't seen these photos yet, uh -huh. but I, I've heard really good things and that they uh -huh. really are like probably stylish than we are. Yeah, well, we have this this um, one woman or oh, two, and they Perfect look beautiful. I They're like more fashionable than I am. I would <laughs> never even think to wear that yeah. belt. She's rocking it. Like, and they're, um, the one um, in the red has those trendy glasses on, <laughs> which well, are so in right now. I don't think I'm going to look like that when yeah, I'm that age. I can only Just hope. <laughs> physically, they look so great, and the way that they're wearing their clothes is so cool. Well, also, they look just, like, I feel that I've seen models, like, closer to our age who are wearing similar outfits, outfits and in uh -huh. similar places in <laughs> magazines and these women look just as good. Well, that's <laughs> so. awesome. I mean, if that's like a hobby for them, like shopping and wearing these styles, yeah. I know my grandma does not look anything like yeah. that. But <laughs> <laughs> I wish maybe I should show her these photos. And yeah, I, get, I guess it shows that at every age you're still like aspiring <laughs> to look like that. <laughs> like there's always someone in the fashion world who you're like, I wish I could look like I that. I know. But we'll, we'll see when we get there. <laughs> well, um, in other news, sad news, music fans are mourning the loss of country singer Joey Feek. The singer died on Friday at age 40 after battling cervical cancer. Feek was able to see her daughter turn two before passing away. The country community is rallying around the family, sending their love via social media. Her husband, Rory, has said the family is coping and trying to focus on remembering the full life Fleek lived. The family is planning to return to their Tennessee home for a private family funeral. Yeah, this is a story that has gotten a lot of attention, and mm -hmm. we've kind of seen her go through the process and, um, you know, with her daughter turning two, and yeah. I've seen all these beautiful photos of them together, yeah. and they've really been, like, enjoying their time together, and, like, the country commu community is one that's mm -hmm. so supportive, you know, as yeah. a big country. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, so I don't know, I you know, it's a great story and she was a great artist. And, and hopefully this, you know, although it's such a sad story and, you know, unfortunate that it happened, hopefully she can bring, you know, awareness to um, cervical cancer uh -huh. and, and you know, um, really being aware of your health in that. Yes, I, I, I definitely think this story does, as many other stories have as well. And it was, uh, they, they released photos, I think just today, of People Magazine. And yes, I did see yeah, that, People uh -huh, Magazine. Uh -huh. Her daughter is adorable. Yeah. Um, well, Matt Weinstein will be with us in studio to talk about all the steamy things happening right now in politics. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Tell the trees not to 
the sun So, I'm kind of new here, but I've noticed a trend. My human does this funny thing where she goes around and gets all my toys, and then she hides them in that basket by the door. You know, but it's always the same basket, and it's always in the, in the same place. And then she acts so surprised when I find them, but, you know, she's putting them in the same basket. Again. It's like, hello? That's where you put it last time. You were the worst at hide-and-go-seek. Welcome back to Juice and Java. Matt Weinstein is here with The Brew to talk about all things politics. With constituents from 19 of the t t t states having cast their votes in the primaries, how do the Republicans and Democrats stand as of now? Well, of last night, we found out from the Super Tuesday results, battling for the 134 available Democratic delegates and the 155 Republican delegates for the Rep Democratic caucus, Bernie Sanders won in Kansas and Vermont, while Hillary Clinton won in Louisiana. And for the Republican caucus, Ted Cruz won in Maine and Donald Trump won in Kentucky and Louisiana. Donald Trump is still leading the polls with 80 delegates, but in a not so distant second, sits te Texan Ted Cruz. They both are clearly separating themselves from the remaining field. Trump is just over a quarter of the way on the, to the necessary amount of delegates needed for a Republican nomination. So Ted Cruz will definitely have to be, still be in the thick of it in this one. In order to receive the GOP nom nomination, it is necessary to have 100,237 delegates. Right now, Trump has 378, while Ted Cruz has 295. On the Democrat side, despite Bernie Sanders taking the last two of three states up for the primaries, Hillary Clinton still holds a sizable lead in the race for the Democratic nomination. With a 96 delegate lead over Bernie Sanders, Hillary's is already halfway there. Today, Maine, Democrats, and Puerto Rico Republicans are holding their primary elections. By March 15th, another 15 state primaries will be closing their polls. Bernie and Cruz may have the most important stretch of their campaigns underway now, because by March 15th, those 15 primaries will be closed, and those delegates will have decided if the political game is going down to the buzzer or going to turn into a blowout. Jump into cleaning up your health with Christina Tiberio. And stay tuned for Zoe Malarose with all the latest fashion trends to switch up your wardrobe. Candice Biggins will also be here to share with us the hottest trends in the workout world. Stay with us. Juice and Java will be right back. Light check. One, two, one, two. Everything looks good on our end. And lights. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. It may only be March, but to get your summer body ready, you might want to think about starting now. Are you looking for an alternative to working out in the gym? How about trying yoga? Yoga with Dara. Dara Harper teaches yoga at the Wachiva Cultural Center here in Syracuse. Take your head under. A college student named Austin Arrington says he is glad to have found an alternative form of exercise. Feeling in touch with my body, healing, you know, some things, stretching. Um, also, I think mental clarity, sense of peace. Uh, through the meditation aspect, and also a um, sense of community. Dara says relaxation is vital, especially for people in this day and age. Having a few moments of, you didn't see like one phone in the room, nobody was being dinged or pinged or texted or vibrated, everybody is just relaxed. And that's a very important part because you need to connect back in with yourself and if you don't take that time of quiet for even just a second to be mindful it's very difficult to to understand what your life is becoming the Wachiva Cultural Arts Center aims to better the society through the promotion of fitness and multicultural dancing and drum 
their program unifies people of different backgrounds to accept and engage others through the various classes that they offer. They are located at 117 Harvard Place in Syracuse, New York. The center also offers African dance, cardio salsa, and flamenco to help get you in shape while having some fun. And guess what else? You can get a discount by showing your student ID. And transportation? No worries. The free SU Shoppington bus will get you there in a matter of minutes. Thank you, Candice. And now we have Christina Tiberio joining us from What the Health to talk about some healthy meal options for spring. Thank you for coming in. Thanks for having me. All right, so we're starting with something that visibly is not healthy, yes. right? You don't think of this as healthy food. No, not at all, even though that Oreos are vegan they're not <laughs> that's even scarier that they are vegan uh -huh. but one of the things that I try to do is I find that when I'm really craving foods it's really protein I'm craving okay but if I want sweets I'll mix dark 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 chocolate because it'll cut Which is good for you it's good for you uh -huh. and it cuts you're craving for chocolate, and then you mix with peanut butter, and it will stop. Like you don't want anything. Oh, that's else so sweet. interesting. I'm assuming these like cookies don't have dark chocolate, right? No, this is the unhealthy. Just go straight for like the bar, and then if you're really craving like ice cream or whatnot, yeah, there is something called Halo Top. Okay. Um, and that's 200 calories. Okay. Like 300. Calories. And will make you feel full, so you'll yeah. stop, right? Oh wait, so now we have another alternative. So this might not look the best right now. But yeah, it's you need to like rinse it, but it's actually like pre-cooked so you could eat it straight if you wanted to. It's a tofu based it's pasta? It's tofu alternate? based pasta. They're uh -huh. called shirataki noodles. Okay. Um, there's also yam based ones. It's just the kind of noodle. Uh -huh. um, they're like 30 calories for like yeah. the whole bag. So if you're and cutting out carbs. If you're cutting out yeah, carbs uh -huh. and they're best I think for like Asian dishes and uh -huh. not like Italian but you could totally go for it. There's thinner fettuccine or it, thinner noodles. That's an awesome alternative that I feel like a lot of people don't know about. Yeah. And then sugary drinks. This sugary is a killer drinks. right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh -huh. So I carry around uh, sparkling water everywhere I go, and you should be drinking two of these a day. That's hard. People That's do hard. not reach yeah. that number. Uh -huh. And three if you're exercising. Yeah. So one of the easiest things I think to like cut down sugar is adding frozen fruit right here uh -huh. into this and some herbs so you could do mint and blackberry and then you'll drink a lot more yeah, and that goes drink a lot more. perfectly with a healthy little salad can you so, tell us what's in yeah here? so this is a great mixture to cut all the dressings which is usually the unhealthy part it has prosciutto nectarine some parmesan yeah, it looks and great. peppery arugula uh -huh. and you don't need any dressing i think i'm gonna try it this yeah. is perfect getting ready for spring break eating healthy christina thank you so much yeah. for showing us all these great alternatives those health tricks will help shed the extra pounds perfect for a new wardrobe here with us now is pr director of zippy magazine zoe maliaros to tell us how to switch up your spring wardrobe welcome zoe thank you me i'm so happy to be here thanks for joining us so first let's start off with talking about your outfit so i love it thank by the you way. <laughs> thank you i figured it's a little bit warmer out it's getting a lot sunnier exactly. so try and brighten up the colors i'm not super uh -huh. into like bright colors but just a little okay. bit lighter than maybe some of the blacks or deep so, grays and are you more into like pastel Styles. I see your vest is kind of like yeah yeah that is it pink almost? A little bit. It's very, very pale. But yeah, yeah definitely as it gets warmer and like the, like I said, the sun is out and trying to just brighten up the colors and make it a little bit happier, I so guess. So would you say this outfit is like something that you um, took like winter clothes or maybe transitioning into spring? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I know everyone's been wearing turtlenecks like all winter and yes. jeans for sure, but maybe just kind of like shorter ankle boots or just substituting a full jacket for a vest and things like that. So definitely working with your closet to Kind yeah, of so minimize. What, what are some of these pieces that you have here? Well, today I brought just a couple of leather jackets with t-shirts underneath, whether okay. you want to like tie it or just leave it as like a full striped shirt right here and just kind of pair it with I, any jeans. So this one over here has a tie up here. Yeah, so cute. super fun. But it's just kind of like we're talking about spring cleaning, so using what you had all winter and just kind of minimizing it down to make it better for spring. And what are some items that maybe if you're doing spring cleaning, cleaning at your closet, and you're like, oh, I don't wear this ever, what are some items that people maybe should think about keeping around the, uh, to make a spring outfit? I definitely think the best thing to keep around is something like a vest, because okay. I know you were probably wearing like fur vests all winter, yeah. things like that. <laughs> I did, I got two. I yeah. like searched around They're all winter best. break for like the best Exactly. Ones. So I'm sure other people searched around for them and really strategized their shopping. So it's definitely a great thing to keep around just with like a lighter shirt, maybe substitute like a turtleneck sweater for like a turtleneck t-shirt okay. things like that 
And now what about shoes? I know in Syracuse we're all about the boots, <laughs> all about the snow. Right, right. So how can we get spring shoes or transition from winter to spring? Definitely putting away winter boots and things like that. I know okay. that I kind of have boots are my, not okay. Right, I've <laughs> shoved them snowing. in the corner and kind of substituted for ankle boots, things like that, kind of those slip-on sneakers. And sneakers are also huge right now. So things like that that you're not really afraid to um, get wet. Or yeah, because I know this is Adidas sneakers. They're which, everywhere. They're yeah. everywhere. I feel like those were popular when I was like in middle school right, or something. Right. And now I'm like, oh, I should get another pair. I know I was joking <laughs> when I bought mine that I should have just saved them from second grade or whenever they were popular. But those are huge right now, especially for like doing things, activities with your friends and things uh -huh. like that. They're so Walking comfortable to, to be wearing. Yeah, they're great. I love them. And they go with, I mean, they look great with these leather jackets or jeans, whatever. So. And so just to end, what would be your number one spring item to have? My number one spring item to have is definitely a good pair of ankle boots. Some, okay. A neutral color that we're goes with kind of <laughs> Yeah, we're both kind of <laughs> rocking there, it now. but I need another pair. <laughs> yeah, something that looks good with boyfriend jeans, skinny jeans, whatever, that you could just wear all the time. Oh, well, great. Thank yeah. you so much for joining us. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you so much for all of your of tips. When we come back, Kayla Spector will be sharing some spring break hacks as she spends her semester in L.A. And J.P. Chunga is here to give us a play-by-play -play of The Bachelor. We'll be back in a minute. Since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. No. Nope. Nope. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around ten thousand dollars in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom. That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. So, I just moved in with this family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, I'll poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this for his sake. Welcome back to Juice and Java. Former host of Juice and Java, Kayla Spector, is out living in LA land and has some tips if you're traveling to Cali for spring break. What better place for sand, sun, shopping, and maybe a few celebrity sightings than Los Angeles, California? For a top tourist attraction, the Santa Monica Pier is the perfect place to go. With rides, food vendors, and the beach right below, you can't go wrong in Santa Monica. The beach is a great place for a relaxing day of tanning or biking down the path that runs along the coast. The 3rd Street Promenade also offers streets filled with top stores to shop at. But that's not the only shopping hub of LA. The Grove is the shopping center to go to. You can shop, ride along on the trolley, and grab a bite to eat at the farmer's market. And what's LA without good food? The farmer's market has so many foods to choose from. From ice cream to Mexican food to freshly made peanut butter, there's always something great to eat. And if you want to see where your favorite TV shows and movies are made, then head down to a Warner Brothers studio tour. With tons of sets and sound stages, you'll feel like you're a part of the entertainment industry. You can even take a seat on the friend's couch in the Central Perk. If you want in LA, you should definitely take a drive down one of the world's most popular streets. Rodeo Drive. Located in Beverly Hills, window shopping is a must, and there's bound to be a celebrity sighting or two while walking down the streets filled with designer stores. In Los Angeles, California, I'm Kayla Spector for Juice and Java. In just a few short weeks, the world will know who Ben gives his final rose to. So will it be JoJo or Lauren B? Resident bachelor expert <laughs> JP Chunga is here to let us know. I don't look like a bachelor expert, <laughs> but don't worry. I know all about this. I've heard you are. <laughs> so the first thing I want to show is because the big controversy after this last episode is the fact that he decided to say I love you to two people. Roll it. <laughs> ben, I love you. I love you too. <laughs> Judge, I love you too. What? What is right? <laughs> Why did he say oh, that to two people? I feel like they never say it at all. Exactly. It was like, unprecedented. That's like a bachelor. They think no. they're not allowed. Yeah. They I aren't. Know. Because you have to make sure that the race is open for, right. for everybody. Yeah. 
He's been favoring Lauren B this entire season. Uh -huh. We've seen it. Uh -huh. But then he tells her, I love you. What's going on? Okay, Lauren B's reaction was not as good as JoJo's. Did you see that one? JoJo was so surprised. Lauren B was just like, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it was so beautiful because they were able to spend the time together in the fantasy suite. This was a big episode. It was massive. <laughs> Huge. Kayla started off this episode with a terrible date. I'll oh, go ahead Kayla. and say it. It was painful. It was painful the to watch. crickets. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know if I'm Kayla's biggest fan, though. Neither was he. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a big fan of Kayla because, first of all, she's moved 17 times, which either means you're in witness protection or you don't know what you're doing with your life. What's going on? Or she's like messing up some something in like the place she's no, living she's in has to like girl, move guys. somewhere else. Come on. <laughs> she's just too bubbly for me. <laughs> this date though with Lauren B, where they're cleaning turtles. Yes. How does a regular person compete with that? <laughs> Honestly, I look at that and I am so done. I, I can't even do anything about that this is the opposite of his time with Kayla they're yeah. doing like the cutest thing yeah. no awkward crickets they're having no. a blast because he loves her <laughs> he loves her and then they start the fantasy suite and it's just perfect with them but in the jungle the mighty jungle Jojo out there ready oh, to go she's my girl she was the <laughs> best Jojo fan I, I love Jojo so <laughs> much too. she was everybody's like mean girl best friend that yeah. everybody went over to to talk after Ben screwed them over or something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and now she's in the final two her I'm ready for her spotlight. she looked great also in this episode very well dressed um, <laughs> I, fantastic. I, know, I always think about it, if I like went on the bachelor I'd have to buy like a whole new war wardrobe <laughs> and they do <laughs> yeah, they style the bachelor or the bachelorette. They don't style the contestants. So mm. JoJo looking good. She's the best dressed, about to get undressed in that fantasy suit right now. <laughs> but still, oh, I'm sure they they just said I love you. They are gonna yeah. and, show that off. <laughs> <laughs> and she looked great sharing watermelon with with Ben right here. Fantastic. Oh, I think he even said that morning, he was like, you look beautiful when you wake up, and she sure does. She that is like great. the best compliment. I know. I have a girl crush on her, I think, officially. <laughs> I have a regular crush on her. As uh, Kayla decided to, oh. to go over to Ben and, and just surprise him, all of a sudden, out of nowhere, bad move, because that's when you got eliminated. Mm -hmm. It was one of, one of the worst moments in Bachelor history watching that. I just felt physical there's pain. Always, there's always someone, or a moment where it's cringeable on, uh, on The Bachelor. Uh, uh, and I that was, was most definitely a cringeable moment. Well, I'm so glad that you are enjoying this. Women Tell All is next week, right? I, that's <sighs> probably one of my favorite this parts. Week. Get this, ready for yeah, Lace. Tomorrow. Get yeah. ready for Lace to bring the fire. <laughs> Olivia is well. Olivia, oh. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my hero. Well, we have a lot to look forward to. And thank you so much for thank coming. Thank you so much. Again. No problem. Well, speaking of relationships, ending your relationship just got a whole lot easier. Two Canadians recently created a service called the Breakup Shop, where they will break up with your significant other for you. Their most popular services are the breakup text and the breakup phone call for $10 and $29, respectively. So, my first thing that I noticed about this is that the $19 price difference between the breakup text and the breakup call. I, what is this? I, you know what, the world is getting crazy. Do your own thing. Everyone wants to do communication some weird way. Yeah. Anyways, we want to thank you for joining us on this spring cleaning special episode of Beast and Java. Make sure to like us on Facebook and give us that double tap on Instagram. We'll see you back in April. For Juice and Java, I'm Mia Rossi. And I'm Maddie Stetson. Have a safe spring break, Syracuse.